anti-faith bias that seems to be growing. It can be seen on college campuses like Vanderbilt University, which force Christian student clubs to welcome non-Christians in leadership or in the media's support for LGBT activists and disdain for those who speak of religious liberty. Faith and culture expert Billy Hallowell says what's most concerning is that this anti-faith bias is now well entrenched in our most important cultural institutions, or the big three, as he calls them. When you're not presenting both sides of something, when you're not giving people options, whether it's at a university, whether it's in the media, whether it's in Hollywood, you're essentially robbing people of the ability to make a choice. And millennials are perhaps most affected by this dynamic as they've grown up with a glut of media and entertainment. People are much more disconnected, I think, from what is happening, desensitized to it. And really the end effect of that, the big change, is that opinions are shifting. A millennial himself, Hallowell looks closer at these dramatic changes in his new book, Fault Line. One wake-up call? Polls which show a growing number of Americans who don't have an issue with premarital sex and having a baby outside of marriage. Also, support for multiple romantic relationships has doubled. And now almost two-thirds of the country sees homosexuality as okay. At the same time, going to church is no longer a way of life for almost a quarter of all Americans, with millennials leading the way generational replacement is happening, that there is a larger number of people at this point as millennials who are disassociated with faith than previous generations were at this point. Hallowell points the finger squarely at the big three. I don't think we've taken enough time to look at all of those areas together, right? Because that to me was like sort of the eye-opening thing, because it's easy to sort of complain about an individual area and to take a show and pick it apart. But when you really start to look at data and information and, and logically break it down, it really does become troubling. That data includes numbers like this. Almost six in 10 college professors describe themselves as liberal or far left. Only around one in 10 say they're conservative, that's a 50% difference which translates into what Hallowell calls liberal privilege. People who are liberal or maybe not affiliated enjoy um, the ability to sort of speak freely, whereas people who don't associate with those beliefs have a harder time maybe speaking up. One clear example happened in 2009 when the media blasted Miss USA contestant Carrie Prejean for her answer to a question about gay marriage. I think that I believe that a marriage should be between a man and a woman, no offense. If that girl would have won Miss USA California, I would have gone up on stage, snatched that tiara off her head and run out the door. Hallowell believes that outcry fits with a normalization of rampant sexual activity. It has infiltrated television, making the so-called family hour obsolete. As a dad, Hallowell felt he had few choices for his kids. His instinct proved correct when a Barna report found that less than 1% of Americans believe Hollywood is faithful to Christian beliefs. Even more concerning is the subtle anti-faith bias that people often miss. I think the covert is much more problematic and dangerous, and it's the thing that we don't think is a problem, right? To top it all off, our guide to these events and trends, the mainstream media. Just 8% of journalists say they attend church or synagogue every week. That contributes, as Hallowell, to a worldview bias, a bias in selecting stories and content, and most recently, election night coverage that resembled a funeral. You're awake, by the way. You're not having a terrible, terrible dream. Also, you're not dead and you haven't gone to hell. Hallowell hopes his book will serve as an alarm to fellow millennials who have become desensitized to this anti-faith and often anti-conservative bias. We don't even recognize that some of this stuff is problematic anymore. Uh, we look at it as normal. One way to fight the new normal, he says, is from the inside. Hallowell urges believers to go after careers in Hollywood, the media, and academia to turn the tide in subtle and perhaps not so subtle ways.